In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this Plim Plim cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So this week, the only cake that I have is this Plim Plim cake, and I've never even heard of this until this lady asked me to make it. And this is not my original design. She sent me this picture, and I could not find a watermark to credit the original designer, but she wanted the cake very similar to this. I told her I don't do 3D figures, but I will do it in two-dimensional, and she was okay with that. So like always, I'm starting with my cake already baked, filled, ice, and in the refrigerator waiting for it to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, and refrigerate cakes. All of that will be linked in the description. And before we get started, I want to let you know that you can now book a Zoom call or a phone call with me. So if you have any cake questions or need cake advice and want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that. And all of that information is linked in the description. So let's get started. I have a cutting board that has a piece of non-slip pad underneath it so it doesn't slide around, an X-Acto knife that I can, and a wet paper towel that I can keep wiping the blade on, a dresden tool, and a little bit of water. And all of my fondant has this gum text mixed into it. It's Tylo's powder gum text. It helps your fondant set hard. If this is in all of the fondant that I use, it makes it so much easier to work with. I measured my cake and I printed these out the size that I need them to be. And I rolled my fondant out pretty thin and I'm going to do my trace, cut, and smooth method with all of these pieces so I am tracing this and I'm pressing lightly with that Dresden tool you don't want to press too hard because you don't want to poke a hole into the fondant but just hard enough so you can transfer that line onto the fondant underneath and then I'm making marks where the eyes and the eyebrows and all the other um, details go peel it back and you can see it and then I just want to trace the other tan pieces onto this fondant with the hands and perfect, let's start to cut these out. And every time I cut anything out of fondant, I'm gonna take my time to smooth my cuts using my tools and my fingers. You may not see me do that every time, but I do it every time. And now I'm gonna do the same thing for the red. So I have that red fondant rolled out really thin. It has a Tylos powder mixed into it. And I'm just gonna trace this onto the red fondant. And I also want to trace the heart, so I just moved it to a separate area. And this piping tip is the same size as the nose, so I'm just going to easily cut that out. These tiny pieces can be a little bit of a pain to work with. Now I have some thin white fondant, and I'm using a little piping tip to cut out a circle for the background of the heart on his little outfit and use a little water and stick them together. And now I want to trace the white part of the mouth. So again, putting this on top of the fondant and I'm just cutting straight across and then you'll see what I do. I use that piping tip for the nose and cut that out. So the nose is going to fit into the mouth perfectly. And there, perfect. And now let's do the little cape. So I'm going to do a complete triangle and I'm going to put this triangle behind the entire piece. So yet sometimes you have to look past the piece and figure out what you're going to cut. And let's do the boots. And I'm actually going to cut out a fondant, these little eyebrows in the mouth because I wanted them to be a little thicker. You can always draw them on with an edible marker if you want to. And then this piping tip is the same size as the eyes, so I'm using that to cut out the eyes. And now let's do the hair. So I have this thin royal blue fondant and I'm going to do the same thing. Now I have some black fondant here and I want to put this together so I'm going to get a little bit of water on the back and I want to make sure that I can cut an even border around here so let's see where the hair goes oops I got to move that down just a little bit and that is perfect get a little bit of water behind the cape like I said I wanted to put the cape behind everything so I'm putting the cape down first and you can see how thick I rolled that fondant out um, because I want to get a skewer in there and then I'm looking at the picture and just piecing this together to look like the picture And now I want to get the rosy cheeks, so I have some carnation pink petal dust, and I'm just going to color those in.
and I'm just looking at the picture just to make sure that I get everything in the correct position. Perfect, now I wanna get those little white dots of the eyes, so this is like a number two tip, and these are so tiny, um, but it just makes it look so much better when you have those white dots in the eyes. And now, anytime I cut anything out of thicker fondant, I cut a shallow cut first. Um, that way it gives me a line as a guide so I don't mess up the fondant when I'm cutting it. So I'm just putting the tip of my X-Acto knife into the fondant here. And then when I have that shallow cut, I'm gonna stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cut this out. So since I have that line, I can use that as a guide and I'm not gonna wrinkle the fondant as I cut this. And then I like to flip it over and take my tools and use my fingers to smooth all the edges. And I'm using my tool and I'm just pressing the fondant back down on itself wherever it's sticking out. And then flip it over and do the same thing from the front, just making the piece look a lot nice and a lot nice, <laughs> a lot neater. And now I have a wet skewer. I'm going to twist this in here. I'm not going to jab it in. I don't want to distort the piece. So I don't want to stick it right in the center because you're going to be able to see the skewer. So wherever it's going to touch the cake, I want to stick it right in the middle of that fondant and I'm twisting it and then turn it over. Make sure it's not poking out the front or the back. Get all the way up there. And then I'm going to wet a toothpick and stick it in the other foot. And that looks perfect. Let's set that aside. Now I'm gonna make the number one, and I'm gonna trace it onto this thin red fondant that I used before. Cut it out, smooth my cuts. And now I have this circle cutter, so I'm gonna cut a blue circle out, and then I'm gonna cut a yellow circle. Oops, let me smooth my cuts first. <laughs> I'm gonna cut a yellow circle the same size, stick that in the middle, and then I'm gonna get a bigger circle cutter so I can get a nice blue border around here and you can see my <laughs> big head making sure that it's even and cut that out and now I have a nice little circle background for the number one get a little bit of water on the back of the one and stick that down and that's pretty much going to hold it together good let's set that aside now I have these star plunger cutters and I have a bunch of different fondant rolled out so I'm going to cut a bunch of stars out in both the sizes and both the colors. You can see them on the left. I have them setting aside. And now I have fondant rolled out pretty thick here and these stars are gonna go on the top. So I have this other star cutter and I'm gonna cut a couple thick stars out of every single color. Set those aside. Now I wanna make balloons so I'm rolling this into a little ball and then I kinda of wanna taper it down at one end. And these are really simple balloons to make. So where it comes to a point, I wanna put it down on the countertop and cut the point off. And then I'm going to reshape that little triangle and it's a little difficult to see, but get some water on there and I'm gonna stick the point of the triangle in the bottom so it looks kinda of looks like a little balloon. So I made a couple different balloons in a couple uh, different colors <laughs> and now I want to make the balls. And I have a video showing you how I make fondant balls and that will be linked in the description. So I'm just breaking off random pieces because I want them to be different sizes. And again, this fondant has Tylos powder mixed into it. These balls are going to hold their shape and let's set the, that aside. Now I want to make the border. So I've sprinkled down some cornstarch and roll this out really long. And I have a ribbon cutter and I'm just going to cut a strip. And that's going to be the bottom border of the cake. I got my cake out of the fridge. I'm marking where the front is and then get a wet paper towel and clean the cake board, removing all that icing. And I want to find the front of the cake. So I'm going to the back and make a little mark. There's my piping gel and I'm going to wipe piping gel all around the perimeter and then find that mark that I made in the back of the cake and wrap this border around the cake. Where it meets in the back, cut it and then press it together. And then I like to take my palette knife. This icing is hard, I'm not gonna mess it up. And I'm pressing the border down to the cake board so there's no space there. And I got this little guy and I'm going to get a little bit of piping gel underneath his feet where he's gonna touch the cake and stick that down and get a little bit of piping gel around the outside of there, uh, the back of the number, and get a little icing in the middle. I like to use icing and piping gel sometimes. It's just whatever I'm in the mood for, but stick that to the cake. And now I'm gonna get some piping gel, or you can use water behind the stars and put the stars down. 
And now I want to get wires into the cake. So I have a video showing you how I do this in full detail and I will link that below. But I want to cut a bunch of wires, cut the straws, get the straws into the cake. And then I want to countersink them down into the cake so you can't see them. And now these wires naturally have a little curve to them. So I'm just trying to straighten it out just a little bit before I stick them into the cake. And I'm just going to haphazardly, is that the right word? <laughs> just stick these into the straw. I like to do three per straw. And now I don't like that you could see those holes. So I take a little bit of icing, whatever color icing that you used on the cake and fill those holes. And then I'm dipping a paintbrush into water and smoothing that icing down so you can't, you can't see it. And now I want to slide the stars down on the wire so you could see why I cut them a little thick. So that way you can't see the wire and the stars. Just slide them down and then the balloons I'm sliding those down on the other side as well. And just fixing some of that icing got a little messed up when I did that. So just dipping my paintbrush in water again, just making sure it's smooth. Now I'm breaking a toothpick in half, hammer it into the board, get a little piping gel underneath it and stick the ball down. That way the bigger balls aren't going to slide around on the board. And this one I think I want to put on top. So I get a little toothpick underneath it and stick it to the top of the cake. And I always let people know that there are toothpicks underneath those balls. Not all of them, just the bigger ones. And then I'm getting some icing down and I'm just putting these down. I don't like that yellow one there. Let me move it. <laughs> you know, so I'm just putting these where I feel like they look best. And I have a video showing you how I do this. Again, I will link that in the description. And lastly, let's get the ribbon around the board. So let's measure it, get some glue around the cake board and on the back of the ribbon and press that against the board. And there is the cake, so cute. So there you go, how cute is this cake? It's a simple-ish design, and I do have videos that go into further detail on how I make the fondant bubbles and how I do wires and cakes, and those will be linked in the description. So this cake is a two layer, six inch, <laughs> and it feeds about 12 to 15 people. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is pinned in the comments below. And keep in touch on social media. And you can check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next. And hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.